Today's topic, the sphere. Now I'm going to show you my low-tech method for turning a sphere. And I'm going to start by turning this block of walnut into a cylinder with my spindle roughing gouge. Remember, this is not for cross-grain work, only for spindles. Now I still have a couple flats on this and I've got a crack right here. I hope I'm going to eliminate that. Now I have my spindle roughing gouge turned just about on its side with the flute closed and I'm going to just do a planing cut and level off that surface. A little bit more. I'm turning about 1400 RPM. Now as I turn this sphere, I'm going to go from a pattern that I've drawn on this piece of paper. And I've got my calipers set to the diameter of my sphere that is just right there on my piece of walnut. So the next step is to mark the center. Now I need to maintain the center marking all the way through the process. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the diameter in the other direction. There and there. Now you'll notice I'm turning between centers. And I'm going to maintain that position all the way through this until the very end. And I'm going to have another chucking system and I'll show you that later on. Now to true up my ends, I'm going to use a combination of a skew chisel with a peeling cut and then finally a diamond parting tool. Now I've left this dimension a little wide and I can uh, fine tune that later on. Now establishing this dimension is relatively easy, right in the center. But this dimension over here is a little hit and miss and I've had a little trouble doing that. So what I've done on my drawing is I've established a 45 degree angle here and here and that allows me to establish the diameter of my sphere in this direction. These are my centers right here. This is the diameter in that direction. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just establish a chamfer right along here in this dimension of my sphere. Okay, and I'm going to do this with my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. Okay, again, that's my diameter in this direction. And what I'm trying to establish is the diameter from this point to this point, and I'm still a little bit large there. So I'm going to keep turning until my diameter here is the same as this diameter right here. Now I'm still a little big in this dimension for my diameter. What I'm going to do at this point is go from my center to this point down here and take away this ridge and make that a hemisphere here and a hemisphere over there. And I'm also going to reestablish the diameter in this direction. Now I'll take my diamond parting tool and just define that diameter now I'm actually going to a spindle gouge to take off this ridge.
Now as I continue to turn this sphere, I'm taking each end down a little bit more as I progress. I'm still a little bit fat in this area, so I'm gonna keep working on that. Now I'm very close in this dimension right here. I think if I take my ends down just a little bit more and fine tune those, I'm gonna be a little bit closer. I'm just taking my spindle gouge and scraping a little bit just to contour that uh, sphere. Now just a word about grain direction and which way you should be turning. Okay, this is end grain here and here and I should be going downhill. That's the proper cut into supported wood, okay? And in this direction on that side. I was scraping in both directions, and I think that's okay. I think that for what we're doing here, uh, I don't have any torn grain at this point, and I'm still gonna take this down just a little bit more. Let me show you the next step. Now you notice on my push cut on the ends, I'm getting a very shiny surface. That's not the quality of my cut. I'm burnishing the surface with my bevel. Okay, I'm just bending over the wood fibers and it makes it look shiny. But it's not a bad cut, so a little bit more fine tuning and I'll show you the next step. Okay, now here's the question. There's a guy in Mongolia 10,000 years ago invents the bow and arrow. Did he invent it? or the guy in Central America. Well, I don't know. Here's the next step in my process. Now, I don't know if I invented this. I'd like to think I did. Who knows? Here's a sphere, okay? And I've got a number of these blocks of wood with a perfect radius right here. The rest of this doesn't matter. This radius was cut on a circle jig on my bandsaw, so it's perfect, okay? Here's one of my spheres with a five inch diameter because it says five inches right on this block of wood. I've got sandpaper on the inside of this. Now keep in mind this is a very important point here. I'm not taking off wood with this sanding block. Okay I'm only marking the high points on my sphere. Let me show you that. Now I've got a number of these in different diameters. Here's a nine inch diameter, eight inch uh, all the way down to four or five inch diameters. So I've got one for my walnut sphere right here, and I've got that down to that dimension. And let me show you what I do. Okay, I've got my little sanding block here, and I've got that fit to this dimension for this sphere. I've got a piece of chalk. And it's always handy to have a little chalk around your shop. And what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna just rub my chalk along that surface. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just take my block of wood and I'm going to rub it along that sphere. I've taken the chalk marks off on the high points right here and on the other side that you can't see. I've got chalk here and on here so Put my tool rest back up and I'm just going to scrape that surface and I'm going to repeat this process. So I'm just blending in this high point with the surrounding surface and I'm going to put some more chalk on my surface of this spear and I'm going to repeat this. And that's much better. Now let's go on to the next step. Now I'm using a couple different parting tools to decrease the size of my ends right here. And I'm going to try to go down to a couple millimeters.
So there we are. On to the next step. Now I'm going to show you something else that I definitely didn't invent. I'm sure this has been around for a long time. What I have here is scroll chuck with a piece of wood chucked up into it and a recess in here. Okay, and the same thing with my tail center. All right, I've got that nut in there glued into a block of wood that's going to spin. Here's my sphere. Now you notice my cup centers are probably a little bit large for the diameter of this sphere. So here are my centers. Not cut all the way through. There's a little crack in there, but oh well. So now I'm going to take my little saw and just cut those off. Now I know with my sphere in this position, this point and this point are still proud of the surface. So I'm going to just take my spindle gouge and scrape that surface. Now I just put a new sharpen on my tool and it's got a nice burr on there so I'm going to use that to scrape. Okay, now I've got my ends down. You can't even see this one right here. I've got those down to a point where I think I'm in good shape. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more chalk on that surface and see how I'm doing. I got my camera backed off because I'm creating a little bit of dust here. And you probably can't see what I'm doing too well. Okay, now I'm very happy with that. I'm getting a nice even uh, scratch pattern throughout that sphere. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just rotate that a little bit. So here are my centers, my original centers. And at this point, I'm not going to use this block of wood anymore. I'm just going to sand it by hand and I'm going to just keep turning that a little bit until I take all the high spots off. Turn that just a little bit more. Now I'm going to do a bit of power sanding right now. And you might hear my fan, which is right back here, blowing across my work. And it's a good way to keep the dust out of your lungs. Now this is something I should have done a long time ago. Lately I've been sick and tired of being disorganized with my sanding discs. They're all over the place. So I've got sanding discs from 80 grit to 400 grit on this uh, block of wood. It's a little bit added expense, but oh well. So I'm going to turn my lathe in reverse, slow it down a little bit. Now I've got a quick release here in my drill. So I can just change my, my sanding disc very quickly. Well, there you have it. The perfect spear. I read a comment on YouTube on somebody's channel who was turning round things like this. Why would you do that? Why not? It's the perfect shape. No beginning, no end. And as Franklin Roosevelt said, nothing to spear, but spear itself. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you next time, and maybe we'll work on a pyramid.